Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to this last lesson on optical phenomena and properties of material. In the last lesson, you learned about emission spectra, and in this lesson, you're going to learn about absorption spectra. Please, Grade 12, you need to know the difference between the two and why they are applicable. Please make sure you understand, listen, and watch carefully the video that's about to be shown to you by the Mindset Learn team, and then go do the assessment in the two-level system. In another lesson, we focused on line emission spectra. In this lesson, we focus on absorption spectra and how they differ from line emission spectra. The element helium was discovered on the sun before it was discovered on earth. This is surprising because of course, no one can go to the sun. So how was helium discovered on the sun if no one can go there? Helium was discovered by observing the sun's absorption spectrum. Here is helium's absorption spectrum. And here is helium's line emission spectrum. How do the two differ? Notice how the line emission spectrum is mainly black, but the absorption spectrum is mainly colored. Notice how the bands of color in the line emission spectrum correspond to the dark lines in the absorption spectrum. We can say that helium's absorption spectrum is the reverse of helium's emission spectrum. This is true for any element. But why is this so? Remember that line emission spectra are emitted by an excited gas. We can excite a gas by placing a potential difference across it. We can view the line emission spectrum formed with the spectroscope. In contrast, absorption spectra form when light passes through a gas which is not excited. Cold gas with no potential difference across it is not excited. This means its electrons are in the ground state. An electron is in its ground state if it is at its lowest possible energy level. For example, the ground state for both of helium's electrons is level 1. When white light is passed through a cold gas, the gas absorbs some frequencies of the light and transmits the rest. Transmits means lets through. Absorbs means takes in. If we let the transmitted light pass through a slit and then through a prism, the light is diffracted. It is broken into its component colors. If we project this diffracted light onto a screen or photographic plate, we see an absorption spectrum. The bright areas correspond to light which was transmitted through the gas. The dark lines correspond to light which the gas absorbed. Since the gas absorbed these colors, they are missing from the absorption spectrum. The colors missing in an absorption spectrum are the same as the colors present in that element's line emission spectrum. Why? Why should helium gas emit these colors when it is excited and absorb these same colors when it is cold? Remember how the bright lines in a line emission spectrum formed. Each bright line corresponds to a particular frequency of light. This light was emitted as an excited electron fell down a particular number of energy levels. As it fell, the electron emitted a particular amount of energy. Now, if this same gas is cold, not excited, its electrons can absorb these same quantities of energy to become excited. So this cold gas absorbs these particular quantities of energy from the light which passes through it. This is why the particular colors corresponding to the absorbed amounts of energy are missing from the absorption spectrum. Later, the gas emits these colors as the excited electrons fall back to their ground states. But this emitted light is scattered in many directions rather than only in the direction of the original light. Because of this, the dark absorption bands are still seen in the absorption spectrum. Let's use the red band to clarify the difference between absorption and line emission spectra. When the gas has a potential difference across it, its electrons absorb energy to become excited. If an electron becomes excited and then falls one energy level, it emits a photon of light with a particular amount of energy. 
Let's say this amount of energy is 3,03 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules. 3,03 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules of energy is packaged in a red photon of light. So red light is emitted. This is why we see a red band in helium's line emission spectrum. Now, instead of exciting some helium gas by placing a potential difference across it, we rather use cold helium gas. We pass white light through this cold gas. This light consists of many photons with different amounts of energy. Some photons have 3,03 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules of energy. This is just the right amount of energy for an electron of helium to rise one energy level. Therefore, photons with this much energy are absorbed by helium electrons and so they don't leave the cold gas with the other photons. The other photons are diffracted to their relevant places in the spectrum which forms. Photons with 3,03 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules of energy correspond to a red color. These photons were absorbed by the cold helium, so the red band of color we would expect here is missing in helium's absorption spectrum. Later, these excited electrons fall back to their ground states. As this happens, they release the packages of 3,03 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules of energy again. In other words, red light. But this red light will be scattered in all directions, rather than just traveling straight to fill in the gaps in the absorption spectrum. This is why the black lines in the absorption spectrum will still be observed. We have only focused on the red bands in helium spectra, but the same principle applies to explain each of the other bands. Before we end today's lesson, can you explain how hydrogen could be discovered on the sun? Maybe you can with some hints. The hottest part of the sun gives off white light. This travels through the cooler helium gas in the outer parts of the sun's atmosphere. So how did scientists on earth realize the sun's atmosphere contained a gas as yet unknown to science? The cooler helium gas in the outer parts of the sun's atmosphere absorbed certain colors of light from the sun's white light. When sunlight is observed carefully with the spectroscope, these dark bands of helium's absorption spectrum can be seen. This particular absorption spectrum had never been seen from any of the gases already known at the time. This showed scientists that the sun's atmosphere contained an unknown gas, which they called helium, which means sun in Greek. The composition of other stars is also deduced from absorption spectra.